But anyway, it's been a great thing. It's served a lot of kids oh, in the yeah. public schools and private schools. Yes. Kids that are homeschooled. So, but it, it's kind of slowing down a little bit now. Mm. Uh, last year they tried something new where the kids voted online at school. Right. And that's another level of sure. life we're getting into. Well, everybody but me is getting into. <laughs> oh, well, you can do it, Vernon. No, 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 no. I know. We're voting online right now for the best of the year. All that's voting is online. I know, I know. But I've, I've got Kim. As long as I've got Kim, I don't Kim need Gore email. Kim Gore is such yeah. a super. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's right. Another great superstar. Oh, yeah, yeah, without a doubt she is. Yeah. And, and um but anyway, kids voting is still there and still doing right. good. And, you know, we took it to Georgetown, oh, yeah. tried it in Columbia. I went to Spartanburg, and Spartanburg County has seven school districts, seven superintendents, and seven school boards. Right. Now wow. you can't. That's like can't herding cats. Yeah. You can't. You can't get them no, all together. No. But it's worked that well here, mm -hmm. and it's still going. You know, Bernie, as I drove in early this morning, and of course saw your vehicle, uh, you were kind enough to arrive even before I did early yeah. this morning. I was walking, obviously, here into the chamber and saw that license plate on the front of your vehicle. There's a North Carolina That's right. tag on there. And, of course, for you, who's considered Carolina, the Carolina blue you're wearing on your shirt, but yeah. for the last 20 years, when you hear Carolina, they're not talking about Chapel Hill. What's they that been like for uh, Well, yeah. you know, I shouldn't say this. I say this, and, I, and people know I'm joking. And they don't get too mad at me, but when they say Carolina, I say, now, are you talking about Big Carolina and Chapel Hill, or are you talking about Little Carolina and oh, Columbia? no. Well, that creates some conversation. Absolutely. But if, when you go back out this morning, if you look on the latch that raises my trunk lid up on the Yukon, right. there, there's a little... UNC Carolina blue and white little sticker right there. You've got a, a Carolina just one a little on small, the back just and little, on the front. Yeah, well, yeah. just a little sticker right. on yeah. that latch thing. Sure, just sure. Just a little sticker, yeah. So you're promoting the big Carolina. Yeah, big yeah. Carolina. You and, are going to get And I kid my best friend in the world, Walt Standish. I, you know, he's big, big USC, big Carolina. Right, right. And we, we went up there to a uh, basketball game one night. And... Uh, and got there a little early, and I said, well, drive me around and show me the campus. And he said, you're on the campus. I said, all I see is buildings. We're downtown. He said, this is it. Oh, no. You know, it's pretty yeah, much, it's kind of it like is. NC State used to be. I, right. I, I haven't been over in years now, but, you know, they, their They've campus. They've expanded a good bit. Yeah, they yeah. have yeah, a lot. they have. Yeah. And now, you know, our son and his wife and our two grandsons live in Durham. They so, do. I yeah, don't think I knew I, that. I mean, Raleigh. Right, Raleigh. 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 Yeah, Raleigh. They're close So we're, we're back and forth up there right much. And, sure. And, um, and get to go to Chapel Hill. Some just walk around on Saturday afternoon. Well, you know, for you, Vernie, having uh, been in Yanceyville much of your life, I guess your entire life prior to coming down here, to What's think that? about the 30 years of owning your own insurance company there, having Hicks Insurance, yeah, and then yeah. to be down here, what prompted you and Peggy's move down to uh, I the sold, Grand Strand? I sold the agency in okay. 87. Right. And it was a drawn out situation, but mm -hmm. it, it was just a good situation at the time. I was 51, Peg and I were 51. Right. And, good age. And we were, I never dreamed I'd leave North Carolina. I never, oh, yeah. it never crossed my mind, but we came to, to Wilmington and Riceville Beach and got down to uh, Sunset Beach and right. Calabash. And sure. Peg said, you promised me if we moved away, we'd live where there was some convenience. Well, 20 years ago, it was no convenience from here to Wilmington. Oh, yeah, was. sure. And she said, I'd just soon go back home. I said, well, to Yanceyville. Yeah. I said, yeah. Peg, you don't have a home. We sold a home. <laughs> she said, well, I want to go to the beach house. We had a little place at Surfside. Right. So we went down there and stayed, lived a year. And just really liked being at the beach. Of course, right. we'd spent a lot of time down there. Our kids grew up there, and our kids coming out college, of the surf coming down on, right. yeah, on the weekend. And so we lived over at the beach house for a while. And then, you know, we built and watched the salt plantation. That's right. Stayed there that's about right. eight or nine, eight years, maybe nine years. And that's where Walt and I became such good friends. We were neighbors. And, Walt was down there. Yeah, Walt Standish. Right. And then watched his little kids grow up. Now sure. they all grown, wow. doing really well. And um, so. Then the thing at the church was interesting, working oh, yeah. with Bobby Wilkes. What's Bobby like working for, Bert? Bobby, I'll tell you what, he, he, um, he'd be a tough one to work for. No, 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 no. no. He learned so much. He, Learn he, a lot He from has Bobby. different visions of things, different answers. Right. I always remember a good friend had passed away, and, and, and I went over and told Bobby about it, and I said, you know, Bobby, that was so sudden. I said, you know makes you realize if you've got something to do, you need to do it today. Yes. You never know. He yes. said, no, no. 
if you've got something you need to do for somebody, you need to do it today. Mm. You know, and it makes a lot of sense. That's a great point. Bobby writes a lot of notes. Yeah. I got in the habit of writing everybody notes. Yeah. Bobby visits the hospital all right. the time. I got in the habit of going on Saturday mornings. Now I live close to the hospital. Sure. So you Back still then, go there regularly. I, I yeah, go right. every Saturday morning. Is that right? Yeah. And if it's Presbyterians in there, I go see them. That's <clears> tremendous. They call it the preacher's box. If I go through that box, whether they Baptist, Methodist, don't right. matter. Right. Uh, if they're from North Carolina, I go visit them. I go wow. say hello. Right. And but you know, you learn a lot from somebody like that, mm -hmm. and that's out of the realm of mine and your business life. Right. Right. But to spend five years with him was was a major part of my life those five years. I, I got to say, Bernie, early this morning I was reflecting that my notes from a sermon that he gave at the beginning of this month, right after he got back from the mountains, is one of his my favorites. Come before winter, every every year. And that's what a annual, great line. That's, that's this an, line, that's which an annual, it is, that's it's a annual. wonderful one. And this is, was a great line of you'd never seen someone's tombstone with the words. I was at the office too much. That's right. I wish I hadn't been yeah. at the office so much. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was just a great, I wish I hadn't been at the office yeah. so much. Yeah. You've, uh, or no, excuse me, I wish I'd, I wish I spent more time at the office. Oh. Forgive me. Yeah, I was saying it wrong. I wish I spent more time at the office. You've never seen that on someone's show. Well, you so. know, Brown Bradley well, well, you know, he's a music mm. director over there, and he and Bobby work hard against each other for each right. other and get a, you know they sure. got a lot of the Orangeburg connection but yeah, yeah the Orangeburg yeah. connection <clears throat> but uh, Brown's favorite tombstone saying it is, he said he saw this in Charleston I don't know whether he did or not but it, tombstone <laughs> says that I told you I didn't feel good I told you I didn't feel <laughs> I told you I didn't feel <laughs> oh, good oh no so that was his uh, answer to Bobby's tombstone story but they are two great guys that yeah. bounce off each other. Yeah. And, and you know about First Presbyterian Church. Oh, absolutely. I remember that. You know, absolutely. You know great Support them, them well. Yeah. Yes, yes. And, and I will say this. All this stuff, uh, just so quickly, don't know why I have become so involved in the city and nonprofits and doing everything you can to help. Bobby was always very lenient with me. I mean, he liked that. I, it wasn't like I was spending too much time away from the office because right. we did a lot of things together. Oh, Bobby yeah. and I did a lot, and, he, and you could ask him, and he would help any way he could. And then you all remain involved after you left the oh, church, yeah. oh, and you yeah. joined uh, Raymond Child there right. at Associated Church. That's right. That's I think right. you said Still you continued to yeah. Uh, yeah. remain active, and yeah. of course remain active in the church. Well, Bobby's a good one to go to to bounce things off of. Yeah. You know, and we we talk to each other a lot on the phone and run into each other at right. dinner and lunch sometimes. Uh, I've always said that, you know, Bobby, you know, Bobby lives in another world. I just wish you and I could live in that world. Wow. That's Those just the way his, way his yeah. mind works. Those are great words. We had Bobby with us at Villa Armada a couple of years ago. He was overcoming a bad cold, mm -hmm. so he just mm -hmm. wasn't in uh, as good a spirit yeah. as he would have liked to have been. Yeah. We'll yeah. have to, everyone at least just suffers colds still. That's right. Even, Even Bobby him. Wilkes. That's, that's right. exactly that's right. Exactly that's, right. You know, there's so well, many he's cool. busy. He's got, I think, six grandkids now. Does he really? That's right. And you've got how many, Vernon? Two. You've got two. Yeah, Wilson And, and they are Brooks. both in the, uh, tri in the triangle. Right. right. One of them's in high school, plays right. A lot of football and baseball. The oldest one, Brooks. Right. He's the oldest, and he's about your height. Oh. Fourteen years old. Yeah. Oh, come on. Yeah, and you know both the little boys are adopted. They're they're Koreans. They're little Korean boys. Is that right? Yeah. Got and Wilson, he's the youngest. He's four years younger than Brooks. But right. We go back and forth to Raleigh a lot to watch Brooks play. You've also got and a. You've and also got a child. Yeah. And yeah. Your Louis. daughter's in the triad. Yeah, she's in Greensboro. Good. In Fisher Park, she bought a home in Fisher Park, which is right downtown Greensboro. Right. And um, is she still in bank and burning? Yeah, still right. been in it since she was a freshman at Chapel Hill. That's amazing. She'd go to Charlotte and uh, stay with her grandmother and work at Wachovia, and she's still with Wachovia. She's a regional vice president with Wachovia up in Greensboro. Right. We didn't talk much. We've run out of time, Vernie. I hate to say we, we always weren't get able to talk much mm -hmm. about Associated Insurers, yeah. where you've been, I guess, since you left the church, right. remaining right. active. And, yeah. of course, you've yeah. still been able to remain active in the community even while oh, continuing yeah. to write insurance yeah. oh, yeah. and stay yeah. active yeah. there. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It, it, yeah I, I have a lot of freedom. <clears throat> I come and go, you know, right. pretty good. And, yeah. Uh, of course, First Federal bought the agency oh, before yeah. Raymond died, and, right. and that was that was a blessing. Really, it was good for Raymond. It was good. That's good for Jerry. Sure. And sure. First Federal's been easy to work work with, um, and so I I have my free time. 
And with that free time, what are you mostly doing now, Vernon? You know, well, I say free time. I try to take Fridays off, but that never works. I wind up <laughs> back at the office. Wearing a coat and tie right now yeah, on a Friday morning. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, fri- yeah but, but when I say free time, we jump up any time and go to see Brooks play ball, right. even if it's outside of Raleigh. Uh, one year he was in a baseball tournament and traveled all over the state, and we went to a lot of those games. So I have the time now to do with my grandkids that I didn't have the time to do with my own kids yeah. and my children. That's and right. and that's, that's human nature. That that happens. I used to work from sun up to sun down. Oh, when yeah. you own an agency, it's a lot different than just working at one. Right. And, but now with those grandkids, it gives us opportunity to do a lot of things. For viewers who might have missed you in the past, Ronnie, I've heard you share it before. I've got to ask you. I love hearing it because it reminds me of my own daddy. But, you know, that, that you've got so many inspirations in life around you, both in this community, obviously mm-hmm. folks like in this building, oh, yeah. people that have really helped drive you. That's you've right. got some special that's, inspirations that's as well. A, that's yeah. exactly right. Well, the number one inspiration, as you know, is Peggy, my Peggy. Oh. You know her well. Oh, yeah. I and I give Peggy. her credit for a lot of things. And then, of course, the person who got me started in business a long time ago, Harry Bray, oh. owned the agency, and, and that's another whole story. Raymond Childs is somebody that you cannot forget. Oh, yeah. I know how much he thought of you oh, yeah. and vice versa. I thought of him. And I thought a lot of Raymond, and he saw something I never thought I'd go back in insurance business and he talked me into it and I did and now I'm glad I did I'm, I'm glad I did it's just a, another level from a rural insurance agency in a small town of 1800 people right. uh, to a place like Myrtle Beach see and when I first moved here the wing stores were the biggest buildings I'd ever see hardly oh yeah ever right <laughs> in Caswell County it was to Curing bonds and pack houses and country stores, and that was about it. But Myrtle Beach is just an absolutely wonderful place, and I can honestly say this that Peg and I both feel like we've never lived anyplace else. We love our hometown and our county, but to live here in Myrtle Beach, we truly don't look back, and we feel like we've never lived in a place else but Myrtle Beach. Those are great words. Vernie, thanks Thank so much you. for being with us Scott, this morning. I'm sorry you. we've uh, run out of time. That's Get that right. coat and tie on. Don't worry, I will. Some fun I go out Absolutely. All right. Stay tuned to more Carolina People with Vernie Dove coming up next. Can you imagine owning your own business for years, selling out, deciding to retire, you and your wife moving down, trying to find somewhere to live, ended up in Myrtle Beach. You heard those special words that Vernie shared right there at the end. He and Peggy have made Myrtle Beach home for so many reasons, and they love it here. His special bride of more than five decades. They've made a commitment to the area. You've seen it in everything he does, everything they both do. They continue to do it, even on all those amazing trips to the Triangle. Bernie Dove, thanks for being with us.